Hey, it's Tony Bruski, and this is our Week in Review. Over the weekend, taking a look back at some of the most compelling conversations and stories that we've covered for you of the last week. Brand new episodes back Monday morning, bright and early, 5 a.m. here on the podcast. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. We're talking with top criminal defense attorney Laura Uretzian today about the Daybell case. So many elements in here, Laura, that, uh, you know, it, it just, it's hard to, to keep it all into one conversation. That's why I like kind of breaking it up into uh, nuggets because there's so many places this thing goes. Let's speculate for a minute about Alex Cox uh, and his death. Uh, it was a pulmonary embolism, I believe, was the official cause of death. But what exactly led up to that? What caused it? The timing, obviously, very, very suspicious. Uh, right as uh, the children dying, right as he says to Zulema, I think I'm going to be their fall guy. And then he dies just like that. Uh, as all things seem to work in the land of of the daybells, I, I'm wondering just and specifically because there's been so many texts that have been revealed in this trial where it's it's Lori and Chad talking about the the death levels of zombies and is JJ yes. at a three or a zero or a two and Lori almost seemed to be cheering on just counting down the days till JJ was at a zero. So then the whatever they want to call it could be carried out, the death, the thinning of the veil, whatever they, they named it. Um, but in those same texts, like in the same string of kind of talking about killing their children in very elusive ways, they're talking about sex. They're talking about, you know, while we get together about this, we may have to have some intimate time. And I'm just paraphrasing. It was much more uh, gross than that, yeah. the way the way that they phrased it. Um, but it, it, it makes me wonder a bit about the relationship with Chad and Alex, because it almost seems from what we've learned thus far that the two of them may have been the literally the grave diggers. He was a grave digger. Uh, and Alex seemed to do anything he wanted for the sister. We also know there was bizarre sexual tension between Alex and Lori. Many people attested to this. Many people saw them simulating sexual acts with each other, brother and sister. Was there, and I'm curious about the death of Alex, because I'm wondering if Chad was more behind that than Lori in some sort of weird love triangle or jealousy that Alex was the one who took care of things for Lori for so long. Now Chad is in the picture and he's starting to take care of some things. Did Chad feel intimidated by the brother? Did he have a reason to kill him because Lori, uh, what, you know, he wanted all the attention. He wanted to be her psycho hero. Yeah. So the new Alex now was taking care of the old Alex. I mean, listen, anything is possible sure. in this um, story. I mean, it's one of the most bizarre cases that we've seen in mm -hmm. a while. I don't. I don't remember anything more bizarre than this one. I mean, um, yes, I, 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 there there were some Game of Thrones moments, right? In, mm -hmm. in um, this case, with uh, the relationship and that sexual tension that you were mentioning between Alex and Lori, mm -hmm. uh, and how uncomfortable the wife was uh, because mm -hmm. of it, right? Um, it, it's possible. I can see the prosecution arguing that and are arguing that Chad uh, was threatened by Alex or maybe both Lori and Chad mm -hmm. were done with Alex. Right. They didn't need him anymore. Lori had Chad at this point. Why does she need Alex anymore? Yeah. Um, and, and and Chad comes into the picture and, and they take care of him and 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 he's very much involved. And like you said, they're they're the grave diggers, right? It's not Lori who's who's doing all of that. Yeah. So I yes, I could see the prosecution arguing that if that's what your question is. I, I'm just I'm wondering, you know, just on uh, just speculation. Why did Alex die? Was it because he knew too much? Because he was the hitman on so many of these things, and they realized, oh shit, he could really turn on us if if he wanted to and and expose everything that we're doing, and he'd just be another person to eliminate uh, that would be in their yeah. way an obstacle as they called everyone i'm I, i'm with you he would have been an obstacle especially with now chad being in the picture right mm -hmm. uh, and, and we don't know how alex was reacting uh really to chad if there was the sexual tension between him and his sister uh he may not have been taking this relationship that well you never know 
what's going on. But yes, he would have been an obstacle. He knew way too much. Mm-hmm. He, he knew too much to stay alive. Yeah. But again, we don't have any evidence that he was murdered. At least I haven't heard of it. We, we uh, don't technically have any evidence. And one could almost speculate to a certain extent as well that you have this much stress on you. You've been doing all of these things. Uh, that would certainly raise blood pressure. <laughs> that would certainly increase yeah. odds yeah. of a natural <laughs> cause of death, quite honestly. <laughs> but there, there doesn't seem to be many natural causes of death around these two. But the timing is a bit suspicious, Yes, right? a little bit beyond yeah. suspicious. What, I agree. I'm with you on yeah. that. I'm with you on that. So they could have caused it somehow, but it's... And nothing is beyond yeah. these people. I mean, we're, we're watching, again, a bizarre case. So anything is possible, but I'm assuming if the law enforcement had something, it would have been brought out, but maybe they had some evidence, but not enough mm-hmm. to file the case. And, and why waste their energy on, at this point on Alex? Yeah. Um, you know, he was part of this thing. They focus on the stronger cases and they filed one and they got the conviction. They've got the other one. Sure. Involving Charles and why bother with that last one, well, right? They don't even need the second one. Well, there, there's not much evidence to even go on. He was cremated and there's nothing really that can be looked at in any greater detail at this point. Uh, exactly. They probably didn't have enough yeah. to move forward, even though I'm sure everybody is suspecting and thinking sure. exactly what we are. What What's your opinion on some of the individuals who testified? I am talking specifically about the Zulema, uh, some of the other friends, specifically Zulema is who I wonder about because she was the wife of Alex Cox during some of these bizarre bad acts that certainly went on. And from what we can understand, and if we look at the text records and the email records and such, she was part of the strings of some of these. She was communicating back and forth to the point where she would have had some knowledge that there were these deaths going on. Do you think that at some point they may try and prosecute her for being part of this conspiracy, for at least having knowledge of some of these things, maybe not executing them or carrying them out, but in fact having knowledge and not stepping forward and saying anything because she too believed at the time in these bizarre religious beliefs? I don't think they're going to prosecute her. Um, I think if they were going to prosecute her, they would have done it by now. Okay. I think the fact that she really cooperated, Mm -hmm. sure, she she knew she must have had an attorney who was advising her. And there must have been maybe maybe there's some talks with the DA's office or or, or law enforcement. I don't know. I can't tell you what was going on in closed doors. But I think the fact that she cooperated the way she did Mm -hmm. without invoking the Fifth Amendment. Yeah. Be that she's not concerned about that. Maybe there were some promises made. Uh, I can't tell you for a fact, but sure. uh, I I don't expect a bar- prosecution. Can they? Yeah, potentially. If she mm-hmm. had knowledge, I mean, she's a co-conspirator. Yeah. If there were promises made in a situation like that, would that be published? Would that be public record that some sort of deal was made, or is that always something that would be you know between uh, between the parties? No, it it had. To, if there was a deal, an official deal, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, if they gave her immunity, for example, uh, or if there was a deal, it should be something that um, it's exonerating evidence, and it should be turned over to the to the defense. Mm-hmm. But sometimes the deals aren't made officially. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it could be a wink and a nod, or really? whatever. And just, I mean, I, I and where the person basically realizes okay let me just cooperate or they take the risk they decide okay i'm going to cooperate Mm -hmm. as much as possible and i'm going to give the prosecution what they want not because the prosecution has made me an offer or the prosecution has promised me but because you know what 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 other options do i have i'd rather cooperate and then maybe they'll Mm -hmm. decide not to prosecute me more like somebody saying, you know, sometimes it's, it, it's un, yeah. sometimes it's unsaid, right? We don't even yeah. talk about it. Just someone is suggesting in some way, shape or form, like it's in your best interest to do this. And yeah, they, 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 something yeah. to that effect yeah. where they're, they're, they're not, there's nothing in writing. Nobody's really making a promise, mm-hmm. no promises whatsoever. No guarantee. You yeah. testify, you give us, a, you, you say everything that we're, you know, we're hearing that you're going to say, you know, uh, uh, based on your proffer or whatever it may be. But we can't promise you what's going to happen. 
I'll do one more question, then I'll let you go. Uh, let me ask you, of all the moments in this trial, of all the testimonies, do you think there was one nail-in-the-coffin moment, or what stands out to you as being possibly that, or one of the most impactful moments of the trial? God, okay, I have to think this one through. Impactful <laughs> moment. Um, the one of the, one of the things that really stayed with me was all the steamy texts. <laughs> uh, while I mean, two kids are missing and and dead. Yeah, and you knew that a jury that's listening to that and and seeing some of that evidence and the condition the bodies were in one chopped up one still in his pjs i just to me that was it i mean there's no room for sympathy there's almost no room for reasonable doubt it's pretty harsh stuff for any any jury and it's almost visceral even though it shouldn't be but i thought that those were really 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 bad um especially you know coming from a mom yeah okay so to me that was it this is an examination of the hidden human condition this is the hidden killers podcast with tony bruski lara you're at CN. thank you so much for your insight always appreciate you having you on the uh, program one of the uh, nation's top criminal defense attorneys right there uh, if you like the podcast, be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any breaking updates or discussions on the cases we're following for you right here. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.